Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaste Today we begin a new module which is Stilbi Cultural Management Part 2. So, in this module, we will be having three lectures and we will be continuing from where we left in the previous module. So, these three lectures are Shelterwood System Part 1, Shelterwood System Part 2, and Selection System and Irregular Shelterwood System. So, in the previous module, we began with what is a silvicultural system, and a Shelterwood system is one particular type of a silvicultural system. So, we had a look at this classification of silvicultural systems. So, here we have the three shelter wood systems. So, uh, if we go through this flow chart, the first question it asks is concentration and uh, concentration of felling and regeneration operations. Is it continuous over the whole area or is it concentrated on the part of a forest? So, in the case of shelter wood system, your concentration of felling and regeneration operations, these are concentrated on part of the forest area, they are not continuous over the whole area. Then, if you look at the clearing of the old crop, it is not done through single filling, but it is done through successive regeneration fillings. So, we can say that a silvicultural system is a silvicultural system in which the uh, filling and regeneration operations are concentrated on part of the forest area and the clearing of old crop is done using successive regeneration fillings. So, this is how we can define a shelter wood system using its characteristics, but more formally we, de we define a shelter wood system as a method of securing natural tree reproduction under the shelter of old trees, which are removed by successive cuttings to admit to the seedlings a gradually increasing amount of light. So, what it is saying is it is a method of securing natural tree reproduction, which means that in the case of a shelter wood system, we are going with natural regeneration. You could even go with an assisted natural regeneration, but in the case of shelter wood system, we do not have artificial regeneration, the it emphasizes securing of natural tree reproduction. And this reproduction is done under the shelter of old trees. So, you are not doing this natural uh, regeneration in an open area, you are doing it under the shelter of the older trees, which is why we call it a shelter wood system. So, it is the shelter of the old woods under the shelter of old trees, which are removed by successive cuttings. So, you are not doing these cuttings in a, in a single go, you are doing it in several successive cuttings one by one to admit to the seedlings a gradually increasing amount of light. So, another characteristic is that uh, you, you provide your seedlings with a gradually increasing amount of light. So, in the very beginning they will be having very less amount of light, then later on it, uh, the amount of light will be increased, then later on it will be increased further till a time comes when they are getting the full 100 percent intensity of light. So, a shelter wood system is a method of securing natural tree reproduction under the shelter of old trees, which are removed by successive cuttings to admit to the seedlings a gradually increasing amount of light. Or you can also define it as a silvicultural system in which a stand of trees is felled, leaving scattered trees conventionally the better specimens to restock the cutover area by natural regeneration. So, what we are saying in the second definition is, it is a silvicultural system in which a stand of trees is felled, leaving scattered trees. So, when you are doing the felling, you are not felling it over the whole area, you are leaving certain trees in a scattered manner and you are conventionally leaving the better specimens. Why are you leaving the better specimen? So, that the next generation that comes up from the seeds of these specimens also has those desired qualities that were there in the trees that were left out. So, it is a silvicultural system in which a stand of trees is filled, leaving scattered trees conventionally the better specimen 
to restock the cut over area by natural regeneration. So, by these two, two definitions and with the flow chart, we can make a glimpse of what are the different characteristics of a shelter wood system. But the question is, why do we need such a system? Why do we need to leave out certain trees? Why do we need to provide our seeds or, uh, or uh, a need to provide our seedlings with a shelter of the older trees? Why is there a need to provide them with a gradually increasing intensity of light? So, we need a shelter wood system, because there are some species that are shade tolerant. So, if you remember in an earlier lecture, we had discussed that we can divide the species into two parts. There are light demanders and there are shade tolerants. Now, in the case of light demander species, they require a huge amount of light, they require the full intensity of light and if they do not receive the full intensity of light, they will not be able to grow or to survive. So, those are the light demanders, but in the case of the shade tolerance, here we have a very different uh, characteristic of the species, they tolerate the shade and not only do they tolerate the shade, they also love the shade, they need this shade. So, if you uh, expose these seedlings to the full intensity of light, then probably because of desiccation they will die out or probably because of the high intensity of light uh, they will die out. So, there are these species of shade tolerant plants that require the shelter of older trees, especially in the beginning of their lives. So, some species are shade tolerant, but cannot tolerate harsh sunlight during the early growth stages for which you require a shelter or some species may require greater moisture during the early growth stages. So, what we are saying here is suppose you began with a stand and in this stand you let it grow with natural regeneration. So, now you have these seedlings that have come up. Now, if you do not provide them with shelter, if you remove all the mother plants at one go. So, you are removing all the regeneration, uh, you are removing all the mother plants and you are leaving out just the regeneration. So, what is happening now? Now, if you have the sun, then the, the sunlight and the warmth are going to to suck out all the moisture from the soil. These trees are also now exposed to the wind and wind will also lead to desiccation. So, if you remove all the mother plants, then your seedlings are now exposed to the action of sun and wind and in that case your seedlings will dry out and when they dry out they might probably even die. So, there are certain species that require a good amount of moisture in the early stages of their lives and because of that we require a shelter wood system for these species. Then there might be a need to maintain cover and habitat for wildlife. Now, if you remember we talked about silvicultural objectives. So, there are different objectives of management. Probably you want to have your, uh, your stand for the extraction of timber but at the same time you also want to ensure that your animals that are living in these forests are also able to survive. Now, if you went uh, with a system in which you removed all the earlier trees in one go. So, in this case what we are saying is that you have these trees, you have your regeneration. And because you already have your regeneration, you can now say that okay, I do not need the mother trees, I will just remove them. But then there are uh, your, your forest is not just being used for timber, you also have uh, a number of wildlife that are there in the area. Probably you have certain langur species in this area or proba probably you have a very nice bird population. Now, if you remove these mother trees, in that case 
all these uh, species will not have a home to live in. And so, to meet your silvicultural objective of not only extracting timber, but also conserving the wildlife, you might want to go with a shelter wood system. So, there might be a need to maintain cover and habitat for the wildlife or there might be a need for a forest with good natural aesthetics. So, if you clear cut a forest in that case, even though you will be getting an even aged forest, but then it will look very artificial, because all your trees will look one and the same. So, if you want to have a forest that has natural aesthetics, it looks like a natural forest. In that case, you would probably want to go with a shelter wood system, because in this case you have certain large size trees and you also have the even aged crop that is coming up. And you are cutting the earlier vegetation in successive stages and so at all times you are having trees of different age classes. So, the, the need for a forest with good natural aesthetics might also uh, turn you towards a shelter wood system. Now, a, sh a shelter wood system has four stages, you have a preparatory filling a seeding filling, a secondary filling and a final filling. So, this is how we can describe a shelter wood system that it has four different filling operations. So, we will now look at each one of these. What is preparatory filling? Preparatory filling is a filling that is made with the object of creating favorable conditions for seed production. So, your aim for uh, during a preparatory filling is to ensure that you have a very good seed production. So, when do we do a preparatory filling? We do it at the uh, near the end of rotation and what do you do here? You remove the less valuable species, you remove the trees not putting increment and you remove the dead dying and diseased trees. So, what is the aim of your preparatory filling? Here what you are doing is that you have your forest, probably there are multiple species. And in this case, you have decided that your these uh, species that are dark green and the yellow one ones are the ones that you want to keep, because these are the valuable species. You want you do not want these light green trees in the next regeneration. So, during the preparatory filling, what you are trying to do is that you want to have good amount of seed production by those plants that you want in your forest stand. So, here you will be, be removing those trees that you do not want. So, that is the first stage. So, you remove those species that you do not want to be there in the forest. Next, even in the case of those species that you want to be in the and that you want to remain in the forest, there will probably be certain individuals that are not putting up good growth or that are dead dying or diseased trees. So, probably this is one individual that has certain diseases, probably it is having a fungal disease or probably it is suffering from a parasite. Now, if you let this plant remain or if you let this tree remain in the stand, then when you have the next generation through the seeds, then these diseases or these parasites will also enter into the next generation. And so, you will try, you will uh, do an operation to remove these trees as well. So, even though this tree belonged to a species that you wanted, even then you are going to remove this tree. So, you remove what trees? You remove the dead trees, you remove the dying trees and the diseased trees. So, all these trees are removed. At the same time, you also remove those trees that are not putting up increment. So, you are removing those trees that are not showing any further growth. That is, they have reached their maturity or they are showing a stunted growth. So, probably this tree was of a very small size and in that case you will remove this tree as well. So, you first removed the less valuable trees species, 
then you remove the dead dying and diseased trees and you also remove the trees that are not putting increment. Now, when you remove all of these trees, you have generated a condition in which you have only those species that you want to be in the forest. You have those trees that are not having any diseases or parasites and you have reduced the density of your forest. So, when you have a reduced density, another benefit is that the sunlight or the nutrients that were earlier not available in plenty to the plants are now available in plenty, because you have reduced the competition. And at the at this end is uh, at this end stage of rotation, when you are giving the plants the full amount of nutrients, then the amount of seed that these plants will, will produce will be very large. So, you are doing this preparatory filling to ensure that you have uh, seeds of good species, seeds that are free of parasites and diseases and seeds that come up in large quantity and with a large viability, because their, uh, their mother trees were receiving sufficient amounts of water, nutrients and sunlight. So, this is the preparatory filling, filling made with the object of creating favorable conditions for seed production that is removal of dead dying disease trees, removal of parasitic and uh, disease load, removal of less valuable species and removal of competition. So, that you have good seed production and it is done towards the end of rotation. After preparatory filling, you have the seeding filling. Now, seeding filling is a filling that is made with the object of opening the canopy to secure regeneration from the seeds of trees. And you retain good seed trees and you remove the overwood in the case of seeding filling. So, what you are doing? You are doing a filling. So, you are removing more number of trees with the object of opening the canopy to secure regeneration from the seeds of trees. So, what we are saying here is that after you have you are done with your preparatory filling and you are left with these trees. And now, these trees will be producing copious amounts of seeds. So, now you have ample number of seeds that are there in your system. But then if your seeds do not uh, are not exposed to the sunlight, then probably they will not germinate. So, now your next stage of seeding filling is to ensure the germination of these seeds and what you do here is that you open the canopy. So, what do you mean by opening the canopy? Opening the canopy what we are doing is that let us have another diagram. So, you have you have these trees that are in your system and you also have a large number of seeds. But, because these seeds are not getting exposure to sunlight, they probably will not germinate. So, what you are trying to do now is that once you have your seeds in the system, now you are removing a few more trees and you are removing these few more trees. So, that there is ample amount of sunlight that is coming to the forest floor to enable the germination of these seeds. So, probably you will remove a few trees and once you are done with that a little more amount of light is coming into the system and your seeds are now able to germinate. So, in the case of your seeding filling, you are opening the canopy to enable the germination of these new seeds of these new uh, seedlings from the seeds that were there in the system. Now, in the case of seeding filling, you retain the good seed trees and you remove the overwood. So, you are still leaving a few good seed trees, because you are never sure whether you will be able to regenerate it fully or there might be some hiccups. So, you are still leaving a few seed good seed trees, but you are removing 
the overwood, so that there is some more amount of light that is coming to the seedings. Next you have the secondary filling. Now, secondary filling is a filling made with the object of opening the canopy to remove shelter and allow more light for the regenerated crop. So, what you are doing in the case of a secondary filling is that now that you have these seedlings that have come up, now you want them to, uh, to show more growth. Now, to have more growth you are removing a few more trees, so that the amount of light that is coming into the system is a bit more. And at the same time the amount of competition that your new, uh, that your regeneration was facing from the previous generation is also reduced, because the mature trees they were giving up uh, they were uh, uh, taking up more um, uh, some sunlight they were taking up water they were taking up nutrients. So, you are removing a few more trees, so that the amount of competition is lessened, but still you are leaving a few trees in the system because your species is shade tolerant. So, you are gradually expose, uh, exposing your, uh, your uh, uh, seedlings to more and more amounts of light. And while still protecting your seedlings with the shelter of the older crop. So, this is the secondary filling and then finally, you will be having the final filling, which is a filling made with the object of removing the last shelter trees and the seed trees. So, in the case of the final filling you remove all the trees that were left of the previous generation. So, now you have a forest that has come up to a stage in which it no longer re requires any more shelter. So, now your plants are able to, uh, to survive on their own and so you remove the shelter, you remove all the trees of the previous generation and so now you have a regenerated forest. So, this is a shelter wood system, you begin with a preparatory filling to ensure that you have a good amount of uh, seed production you go with a seeding filling, then you go with a secondary filling and finally, with a final filling. So, what are the advantages of this shelter wood system? Well, one it enables natural regeneration to renew the forest. So, as we saw in the whole process we are not planting any new uh, plants, we are not dribbling, we are not putting any new seeds into the system, but just the natural regeneration by the the seed trees of the previous generation is enough to regenerate this forest. It suits species that are shade tolerant and moisture loving during the early stages. So, because you are covering them with the shade of the previous generation, they are able to get the shade and they are able to have more amounts of moisture, especially during the early stages. It protects the young seedlings from frost, drought and cold wind during the early stages of growth. So, because in the early stages of growth you are also having certain taller plants with more amount of canopy. So, uh, cold winds are not able to blow over your new generation. And so, it protects your young seedlings not only from the harsh sunlight, but also from frost, drought and cold winds. With further cuttings more canopy is opened and more light is available to the growing plants and thus the plant develops uninhibited. So, even though you are providing it with shelter in the earlier stages of life, but then because you are giving it progressively more and more amount of light by progressively opening the canopy. So, the, uh, the growth of the new generation is uninhibited and so it is able to reach its full potential. At the same time it maintains cover and habitat for wildlife. So, it is a very good system if you have a forest that also has wild animals, because the shelter trees that uh, you are leaving for the seedlings also serve as habitats and also serve as covers for your wildlife. So, it maintains cover and habitat for wildlife, it creates a forest with good natural aesthetics as we saw before that you are uh, getting a forest with a natural look. Then it creates an even aged stand, which is useful for concentrated working. So, in this case when you are doing your, uh, your preparatory filling, you do not leave your uh, forest to region uh, uh, for a very long period of time, because after a while you will move towards seeding filling, then you will move towards secondary filling and finally, to the final filling. So, in this case 
the seeds that came up on the forest floor and uh, their germination is controlled by you. So, when you performed your seeding filling or uh, on the uh, uh, your seeding filling and your secondary filling on the whole of the forest stand, then all the new regeneration that has come up will be even aged. And when it is even aged, then uh, the later on uh, managerial operations can be concentrated, because all your plants have the same age and the same sizes. So, it creates an even aged stand, which is useful for concentrated working. At the same time, the soil is protected from desiccation, invasion by noxious weeds, soil erosion and rapid runoff of rain water. So, because you are, uh, because at no time are you exposing the soil completely, because you are having a shelter of the older generation. So, your uh, soil is saved from desiccation, you do not have uh, large winds or sun or, or sunshine that is able to draw off the moisture from the soil, because it is covered. So, the soil is protected from desiccation, it is also protected from invasion of noxious weeds, because when you clear up uh, an area and you provide 100 percent intensity of sunlight, then there are a number of weeds that can grow up in that area. But because you are keeping it, uh, keeping the whole of the area covered, so a number of weed species are not able to come into this area. It protects it against soil erosion and rapid runoff of water, because at all times you are covering your soil with the previous generation. And so, large winds and large amount of rain water are not able to directly impinge upon the soil and remove it. So, soil erosion is also prevented to a large extent by the shelter wood system. And then the best trees get an opportunity for enhanced increment when opened out in regeneration filling. So, what it is saying here is that in the case of the shelter wood system, we began with a forest. Let us have two species. Now, in this forest, what we did for the next generation also has one other positive consequence. So, what we did here was in the case uh, in the case of your preparatory filling, we removed those plants that were not of a useful species. We removed those plants that were dead, dying and diseased and we also removed those plants that were not putting up a good increment. But we left those plants that were healthy and were putting up a good increment. So, essentially what we are saying is that those plants that were not putting up a good increment were removed, but those plants that were putting up a good increment were left in this system. So, these plants are left out. Now, even in the case of the seeding filling, we are still leaving out a few seed trees and those seed trees are those plants out of the ones that are left that are showing the best characteristics. So, what we are seeing here is that in the first stage, we removed these trees in the preparatory filling. Then in the seeding filling, what we did was the best trees out of the ones that are remaining say this is a very good tree, this is a very good tree and this is a very good tree. So, what we are doing next is that we are removing the other trees that we did not classify as very good trees. So, these are the best trees that were there in the forest and then during the secondary felling, we are removing a few more trees, but still we are leaving out a few trees and then only in the final felling are we removing the last trees of the previous generation. But look what is happening now, these trees which in other systems would have been removed in the very beginning, now have time to grow even further. So, these were those trees that were, were uh, putting up the best amount of increment, these were those trees that were very healthy trees and we had left them out to protect the, the young crop, but at the same time this uh, period also provides them an opportunity to put up more amount of growth. So, in this case when we do the final filling, we have more amount of timber at hand, because we provided these trees with more opportunity to put up more growth. So, this is another advantage of the shelter wood system, 
the best trees get an opportunity for enhanced increment when opened out in regeneration filling. However, the shelter wood system also has certain disadvantages. It requires more skilled labor. Why does it require more skilled labor? Because you need to identify those trees that have to be filled in any particular operation. So, for instance, in the case of a clear filling system, you just had to ask your uh, your labor to remove each and every of the, the trees that were there in the stand. But in the case of a shelter wood system during the preparatory filling, they will have to make a list of what all species are there. Then they will have to remove those species that are not uh, uh, that are not of high value to you. So, in this case you want to uh, you will have to teach them how to identify a species, you have to teach them how to make a record of which species is what and where is it located. And then you will have to, uh, to, to provide them with the information of which individuals have to be removed and then they will have to go to that particular area and remove that particular individual. Now, if for instance in place of removing the dead dying and diseased trees, they remove the healthy trees. So, in that case your system will fail. So, you require a large amount of skill to be imparted to the labor for uh, each and every of the stages of the shelter wood system. So, this is a major disadvantage. Then there is less concentrated working as compared to clear cutting system which leads to poorer economics. So, what this is saying is that in the case of a shelter wood system, you have a very concentrated working because you are doing filling operation in a very concentrated way in a very small amount of the area. So, you cut each and every of the trees, but in the case of a shelter wood system your concentration is much less because in say the preparatory filling you are removing say 10 percent of the trees. So, you will have to visit the whole of the forest area, but you are removing only 10 percent of the trees, then you are removing 20 percent more of the trees. So, again you have to visit the whole area. So, the costs of cutting your trees goes up, because each and every time you have to take your labor, your equipment, your machines to each and every area of the forest. So, your costs have gone up. Then you also have the cost of recording the data, you have the cost of analyzing the data. So, these costs are much greater than in the case of a clear filling system. So, overall the amount of profit that you that you would get from a shelter wood system is typically lesser than what you get in a clear filling system. So, there is less concentrated working as compared to clear cutting system and so it results in poorer economics. Then there is residual damage to young crop done by filling of trees and dragging or sliding of timber. What it means is that during your preparatory filling you removed certain trees, you allowed the seeds to come up. Once the seeds have come up then you, uh, you perform the, the seeding filling allow it to reach, uh, allow your seeds to germinate, then allow them to grow a bit more and then you go for a secondary filling. Now, when you are doing doing the secondary filling your labor your machines have to go inside the forest and when they go inside the, the forest a few of your young crop will also get damaged, because they will get trampled uh, below the feet below the tires of the machines. At the same time when you are doing the secondary filling uh, you will be cutting large size trees and then you will be extracting them out of the forest. Now, how is this extraction done? You cut this tree, then you, um, or you uh, tie it up with a rope and then you drag this tree out of the forest. Now, when you are dragging a large size timber, this again will lead to trampling of the young crops. So, because you are visiting your forest again and again and especially when your young crop is already there in the forest. So, there is a greater chance of a damage to the young crops. So, this is another disadvantage of the shelter wood system. There is a, a residual damage to young crop done by felling of trees and dragging or sliding of timber. Then the young crop takes more time to establish. Why? Because uh, in a number of cases you are not exactly able to, uh, to tell how much is the intensity of light that should be permitted to your young crop. And so, if for instance you provided it with lesser amount of light that was uh, that uh, that your seedling was tolerant of. Suppose your, uh, your, your young crop was able to tolerate 
say 30 percent intensity of light, but you only provided it with 20 percent. That is a possibility, but then because your plant is not able to get the 30 percent intensity of light that it was tolerate that it was tolerant of and that it required and it got only 20 percent. So, the, uh, the, the rate of its growth will be much lesser. So, typically the young crop takes more time to establish. Now, establishment as you remember is the stage at which your young crop is hardy enough that it is uh, resistant to the natural uh, ways of damage to the crops. So, it has to reach a certain height, it has to reach a certain level of maturity that we can say that now it is ok to leave these plants alone. But typically in the case of a shelter wood system, the young crops take more time to establish. Then the rate of cutting and regeneration are more difficult to control than the clear filling system. The rate of cutting and regeneration are more difficult to control, because in this system there are a number of entry cases, you have to make a number of calculations and at times things go wrong. So, your rate of cutting is difficult to control, it is not like the, shelter, uh, like the clear filling system that you say that okay, you go into this forest and you cut all the trees. So, in the case of a, of a clear filling system rate of cutting is very much in our control, but in this case it is not in our control. Similarly, the rate of regeneration is not within our control, because it is happening in different stages. And so, the amount of control that we have in a shelter wood system is typically lesser than the amount of control that we have in a clear filling system. So, in this lecture we saw that in the case of a shelter wood system, there are certain species, there are certain requirements that will, uh, that will make you inclined towards a, a shelter wood system. If you have a species that is shade loving, if you have a, a species that cannot tolerate high intensity of sunlight in the early stages, if you have a species that requires a larger amount of moisture in the early stages, then you will have to go with a shelter wood system. And in the shelter wood system, the primary characteristic is that your young crop comes up under the shelter of the older trees. Now, these older trees provide it with shade they provide it with protection from the sun, from desiccation, from wind, from frost, from drought and so on. The best characteristic is that, because you are never uh, denuding the whole of your, uh, your land. So, the land is protected or the soil is protected from desiccation, it is protected from the uh, invasion of weeds, but at the same time your uh, your young crop is able to show its full growth potential, because you are gradually opening up the canopy and you are progressively allowing more and more amount of light to reach your crop as and when it requires that. However, when you are using this shelter wood system, you have to make a number of modifications, you have to make a, a number of provisions, you have to train the, the, uh, the labor force, you have to uh, reach to all sides of the forest again and again. And all of these uh, make it a bit more intricate system, a bit more complicated system to be used in the general functioning. So, at times even though your crops might require more amount of shade, it may be better to just clear cut the whole area and set up an artificial shade. So, that is all for today. Thank you for attention. Jai Hind.